Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike. Today we have this color. This ink is Laban Aphrodite. Refill your soul by writing. We have all kinds of roses on here. It's a gentle ink. It says, born of shells and foam of the sea. Come walk with me. Let your lo let me be your loving and kind muse. 50 mils here and they go for $25 for this bottle on the interwebs. Let's get inside this box where we see uh, this right here. Uh, Ink, pink, the color of ruddy cheeks and coral nourished by the sea to write of new possibilities. All right, so that's that's fun. And uh, inside here, you'll find the bottle, which is a nice glass bottle. It's, I mean, this is a nice bottle. The only complaint I really have, I mean, it has the color and the name and a little design label. It's got a dot on the top in case you're a person that puts them in a drawer. My issue is that this is a real small opening for a bottle this size and this shape. Being this small, it barely accommodates uh, the section of this Franklin Christoph Model 50 that I have the ink in. And that means that you're not going to be able to tip it to get in here because the diagonal just won't work. This needs to be a bigger, this needs to be a, a bigger, bigger opening. That's, that's my complaint about this bottle. Otherwise, I think very nice. Okay. Here it is on some paper. This is Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper. The flow on this I say is medium. I have it in this pen right here, which is a Franklin Christoph Model 50 with a broad Naginata Togi nib done by Mike Masayama. Uh, you can see the profile here. It's very blady, kind of like a, like a Naginata Togi. Really, really nice looking and really nice writing nib. And this pen is just, I think, gorgeous looking. I couldn't figure out what ink to put in here. And I'm like, let's put this weird pink brown in here because this is what this color is. It's like a, like a, like a brown pink. It's not like the box. I mean, compare the box to this. It's not even, it's not even the same ballpark. So if you're worried about getting a, a pale blushy uh, pink, don't worry about that. You're getting a darker sort of old world rose kind of pink is what I think of. Or uh, there are some ranunculus flowers that have this kind of color. Or uh, as a friend of mine uh, pointed out to me, this is Corinth pink from like... Um, uh, like Corinth stone and that kind of stuff. So really, really interesting color and I dig it. Uh, the flow I say is medium and I think that's about right. It is neither wet nor dry. It is right there in the middle. I did have some bleed on the 20 pound copy paper. We'll look at that here in a little bit. Qualities, shading. You're gonna get some shading on this ink regardless, well, more or less regardless of what paper you write on because it's just a very cool pen or rather very cool ink. This comment section is really just some of the ad copy and I hadn't noticed that it was on the inside of the lid and so it's like gold look at gold spot pens they're really really coming out with the poetry uh Van S pens listed as a dusky rose pink with medium shading Drum Ghouls doesn't have a very long dis uh, description so I didn't include them here uh I just said I love this brownish Corinth pink color it's it's interesting and it's unexpected it's not what I well I mean it it's not what I would expect looking at the box. I knew it was this kind of color and that's why I bought it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our water drop test. We'll take a look at our chromatography. We'll look at it on some other papers. We'll compare it to a few other inks that are sort of kind of close. There we go. Put that one mil of water on there. Give it a bit of a shimmy. How much you shimmy this way? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And I don't think there's going to be much left. I think this is, like you can see it, it's pretty much obliterated the writing. Don't pour your coffee on Aphrodite from Laban because <laughs> it will just disappear as if you're washing the coral away. <laughs> so yeah, no, nothing here after a very short time. If you knock your cup of water over by the time you have secured yourself a towel, uh, your work is gone, so so don't um, you know don't count on that. Okay, so here is the chromatography. After which, <laughs> after seeing this, and it should be no surprise that this is all gone. There is nothing left down here where the ink began. It has all moved up the chromatography strip and just kind of stopped here. I guess that's as that's as much force as the water could exert going upwards. But you do see little hints of blue. Uh, if I can get a hold of this thing. Do you see little hints of blue up here at the top, which is very interesting. I didn't expect there to be blue in here, but I guess that's kind of what's 
turning it this sort of mauve brown pink Corinthian pink color. Really interesting, uh, but not the most entertaining chromatography, except for this little hint of blue. That's neat. All right, on my staples 20 pound 30 percent recycled copy paper you'll see a few little feathers here and there i mean there's a few in here but not too many and some of that you can attribute to the nib uh the nagi Togi is a little bit on the sharp side maybe and maybe it's cutting some of the bad fibers in this weak weak sauce paper on the back just a, a bit of bleed through you get to you see some dots a little bit here and there but that's that is, I mean, looking at this, that's pretty, that's below average, I would say, in terms of bleed. This is doing okay, although not perfectly. This is Domtar Bold 28. I got this from Blank Slate Paper Company. You can make your own rulings and such. Link in the description. And on this paper, I think it looks really cool. Like, it really kind of stands out against the, the green lines and the little yellow hash marks and the, the sort of uh, not quite white, but sort of cream color. You can tell when I put it next to a white piece of paper, this is actually a little bit on the cream side. And I think it suits this ink very nicely. And the ink worked well here. Didn't have any problems on the back. There were a couple little dots here and there, but you know, not, not nothing big, no, no real problems with that. Next up, Wheat Straw Paper in my currently inked Inky Fingers notebook. This, uh, the closest analog you'll find to this now is probably sugarcane paper, which you can find in a few places. And it, it worked really well on this paper. I mean, it's a pinker color. You never, sometimes inks and paper just react differently with each other. And this one looks different uh, than it looks here, which looks different than it looks on here. So uh, this is a really nice representation of that color. I think it might look best on this paper, actually. You do see more shading and that sort of thing from here. Looks great. Lastly, Galen Leather Company Everyday Book. This is Tomoe River paper, the original Tomoe River paper, and you can see it down here. I don't like the way it looks on Tomoe River, if I'm honest. I, uh, I, I just don't like it very much. Here it is next to the wheat straw sample, and this just looks kind of dirty. <laughs> like, it doesn't look... It doesn't look good. This looks really nice. That just looks, it doesn't, I don't like it as much on this paper. It's better on this one. Also, I'm noticing that this paper is whiter than the, uh, the Tomoe River here. I think it's because you can see through the Tomoe River so well, but it's just a little bit off white and yeah, it just it looks better on here. All right, comparison time. Here it is on a Colodex card. You can find these, again, link in the description. So many link. Uh, and this is this is an interesting color, and I only have a few things to show you next to it. Uh, firstly, uh, this is Krishna Brown Pink. It's got the name Brown Pink, and it's kind of close-ish, but this is... This is a weird ink. It's mostly sheen, really, on the top. And you have this kind of like, I don't know, orangey red. This is a this is a more brown pink than this is, I think, overall. Although, like, with the sheen, it does make it look kind of brown. That's that's this is kind of an odd one, but uh, this is this is not as sheeny and such. Then uh, Platinum Cassis Black, which I actually thought was closer than it is when I was looking at it before. Uh, it's kind of close in the darker areas here and the lighter areas here. They kind of correspond, but because he's black, not as black as I thought it was. And then lastly, Bunga Box uh, Tears of a Clown, which I have a sample of that I got from my friend Tammy, uh, who <laughs> is great. This is a bit more, this is more maroon than this, but like they're kind of close-ish. This is, <laughs> there's not much that's like this. I hear there's a Tasha ink that's called Corinth Pink that is fairly close to this. I don't have a sample and I haven't been able to find uh, that ink and I, I don't have it, but that's that's the closest thing I've heard of that I can't show you. So Laban Aphrodite, really interesting uh, ink and I think, I think worth the buy. 25 bucks is not cheap, but this is a really interesting ink and I think the most unique ink out of the collection, although I need to get a few more of these just to just to see how the rest of them fare because I like this a lot and I don't have any other Laban inks. This is my only one. All right, that's it. I will see y'all, rather you'll see me in another video. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave something down in the bottom there, uh, you know, write a comment. That's always good for the YouTubes. It helps us out and uh, I'll see, uh, you'll see me in the next video. Peace out.